Hi, hello, it's Nikki and welcome to my messy bookshelves. So today I thought I would share my pile of possibilities for the reading challenges that as of right now I am participating in for the summer. Um, and the first uh, challenge that I am participating in is the big books, the summer big books challenge or big book summer challenge. And that book or that challenge is hosted by Sue Jackson and she's been hosting this for several years on her blog and on her channel. So the requirements are only that you read one big book between Memorial Day weekend, so this weekend, and Labor Day, which in the US takes place the first week of September. So the second challenge that I am going to participate in is the historical fiction readathon, which is hosted by Shelley at Shelley-ish. And I love big books. I love historical fiction. So it is kind of awesome that they will most likely tie in together because all of the books that I pulled off the shelf for the big books challenge happen to be quite large, but they all also happen to be historical fiction or something similar. So uh, I will share my pile of possibilities. There is also a read along that is being hosted um, that I also may participate in because it centers around a book that I had tried to read and didn't, but I will share that in a moment. So the first possibility that I have here is The Source by James Mishner. So this book centers around um, the city of Jerusalem for millennia. So if you are familiar with Edward Rutherford and his books, a very similar author in that they both follow places and they use multiple generations of a family to uh, tell the history of a certain place. So I picked up a couple of his books after reading a couple of Edward Rutherford's books and he was recommended to me. So, yep, follows the city of Jerusalem for since ancient times until present day. So that is the first one. The second big book, and it has not escaped my notice that I have picked books that are over 400 pages, but they all also happen to be mammoths. And that was not my intention, but I could not find anything that met my requirements <laughs> and my mood that were over 400 pages that were not this big. So I am sorry. There is no way I am going to read all of these books, but surely I will finish one of these books. Uh, the next book is Don Quixote by Miguel Cervantes. And this one, who doesn't know Don Quixote? It is a story, I think about a knight but it is a story that is an adventure story and it is a classic and a lot of people love this book and say that it's a lot of fun and it's a fun adventure story and I'm kind of craving adventure so we will see this may be the one. The next one is one that I have actually already started reading and that is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke and this one follows a society of magicians in England and they are all topsy-turvy when a real magician shows up. So this society of magicians are not actual magicians, they study magic. And yes, uh, we see what happens when an actual magician shows up. So I am very much enjoying it so far. I haven't made it very far. Uh, I think I'm five chapters in but I put it down to finish, uh, what was it? What Moves the Dead? That was what I was reading. But yeah, I'm getting back to it. I'll probably finish this one either way. But that is the next one. The next book that I have is Mary Called Magdalene by Margaret George. And Margaret George is a fantastic historical fiction author. If you have not read any of her works, I highly recommend her. I have several of them on my shelves. You probably can't see, but they're on that shelf up there. Um, but her autobiography of Henry VIII, her book on Elizabeth I, 
her book on Mary Queen of Scots, and her Cleopatra one was actually made into a miniseries in the 90s, and then her Helen of Troy one. Those ones I all loved, or I loved all of them, and then I picked this one up several years ago because I loved all the other ones, and I never finished it. So I only made it like a chapter in and then put it down, but yeah, it may be time. So this one obviously centers around Mary Magdalene. The next book that I picked up is, or not that I picked up, that I pulled off my shelf is China by Edward Rutherford. And this one follows uh, several families in China. And this one is a little bit different, I think, than a lot of his other books because usually the time span that is covered is very, very long. This one, I think, starts in the late 1800s. Uh, yeah, 18 or early 1800s, 1839 during the Opium Wars. Usually his books span like a thousand or more years. Um, so I'm interested to see what takes place in this one. So as I mentioned him before, Edward Rutherford usually writes books centered around a place and there are, he tells the story of said place through multiple generations of families that are living there. So excellent. I had wanted to pick up the one about Russia and I seem to have misplaced it. I loved Sarum, which was about Salisbury and I love the one that he wrote about London so yeah this one has been sitting on my shelf for a little while and the last one that I pulled off my shelf is one that I have tried to read before and I put it down and that is The Tale of Genji by Murasaki Shikibu and this one follows a prince the son of an emperor as he uh, lives his life at court and his multiple romantic relationships that he has. So I did enjoy what I had read, so I had always planned to pick this one back up, but I saw um, a channel, I think it was Beautiful Minutia, and she I think is hosting a read-along of this this summer I think maybe in June so I will share down below um, in the description box but I thought what better time to pick it up than when there is a read-along for it so this is another possibility but yeah these are the possibilities for my summer big books my historical read-a-thon and my uh, Tale of Genji read along so yeah if you've made it to the end of this video i hope to see you in the next one and i thank you so much bye